So this little video is about framing. And one thing I wanted to say about framing is I am a painter. My name is Joanne Hasty, and I paint forest views. And my expertise, or I hope my expertise is in painting. And, but one of my most frequently asked questions is how to frame a piece. So I'm not the expert, but I can give you information that can help you make the best decision for your own framing. And I will do that right now in, my, in this video. And when you're deciding to frame, there are a few things you need to think about. So it's your budget, where is it going, the rest of your decor, the size. Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But today I'm going to talk to you about the four framing options I usually think about. I'm sure there's many more. And I'm excited if you comment on this video to hear about your suggestions as well. And another caveat about this whole discussion is I'm based in Vancouver, so my recommendations are based on me being in Vancouver and my local shops and ordering in Canada, and I don't know all of the options in the US. However, maybe this will give you some ideas of what you can do or where to look in the US as well. So if you can, I think the best framing option is going local. There's so many benefits from it, but likewise, the biggest benefit, I think, is you just hand your print to whoever's going to frame it, and they hand it back actually framed. So they are doing the work. Whereas my other options, you're actually going to have to frame it yourself and do all that detailed work. So local is great for that. But you're also supporting the local economy, which is great. And you have an expert working on your piece. And what's so much fun when you go into lo your local framer is actually getting those little corners of molding and deciding what works best with the piece and having a second opinion. So that's another great thing to have as well. Often it feels more expensive to work with a framer. However, what I've noticed is often big box stores, they end up increasing their prices and then doing deep discounts. So it seems like you're saving 50%, but in actuality, they just have a really expensive price. So I haven't found that custom pricing has been too expensive compared to a big box store. The second way that I like to frame is with an online framer. So I order the, the print and then I order the frame to match on an online site. For me, I have an affiliate link and I've used customframescanada.ca. So this frame behind me, this is done with Custom Frames Canada and I've ordered about 12 of their frames. They were fast, they're all custom made to different sizes, especially for my 24 inch by 32 inch. That's kind of an odd size size to find. The standard is 24 by 36, but I find my prints look too stretched if I go that far. So I sell my largest print as 24 by 32. You can order the length and width that you need and they will ship you the frame. They also ship the backing and the glass and the hardware separate. So what I love about this is you're only buying what you actually need. Often, if you go to a big box store, you tend to get all of the parts with it and you don't use all of them. The other nice part is you can pick the molding that you want. And what I like about both local and ordering custom online is you're only buying what you need, which I think is great for the environment, rather than mass producing something that might not um, sell out completely. So I recommend Custom Frame Canada. I have contacted them and they said they could ship to the US. So my next option is your local art store. When I size my prints, I actually try to pick standard US sizes, so they go by the inch. So there's 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 12 by 16, 16 by 20, 18 by 24, 24 by 32. So those should be standard sizes that hopefully you can find in your area. I know there's some centimeter equivalents, but hopefully you can find the frame you need. And often, at least in Vancouver, both art stores that are available, I most often use art from Opus Art Supplies, they actually have ready-made frames. So all you have to do is buy that frame. And what I love about art stores is they usually do custom framing as well. So they have the big tables laid out. So they actually let me take the ready-made frames out. I can lay the, the print on top and see what works. And then the final option I wanted to share with you is Ikea. Ikea is easy because most people have an Ikea in their area. So we can talk about the exact same frames. I actually have one here. So this is a Hofsta frame. It has my print sh um, shades of green too. And basically, I think this costs something like $12. So they're really reasonable priced. And here it comes with the mat. So it had an eight by 10 in the middle where I put this, this um, print. 
but it also had its size to a 12 by 16. So I could put either an 8 by 10 or a 12 by 16. I have both of those size prints on my shop and it'll both work with this frame. I really like this one because it recesses it in a little bit and I just like the look of that. The one thing I'm not a fan of on Ikea frames, this is a Hofsta frame, is that they put the they put the hook onto the backing board and I find I have to stick the nail out on the wall farther and just that little bit of extra leverage actually makes the hole really big in the wall because there's a little bit of wobble to it. And I also find it just kind of hangs precariously on that hook. But let me get you, show you my other frame. So the re, this is the Reba frame by Ikea and it's also 12 by 16 and the inside is um, 8 by 10. So it sits even farther in this hook. So that nail has to sit out even farther. And so that nail is like really wobbly with the weight and it makes that hole really big. But I also find with having a two year old who um, likes to play ball and throw things around the house, he can knock these down pretty easily. He's knocked down our bigger ones. So what I end up doing is I put a hook on either side with a wire and hang it up like this. I find it much easier to then put a hook on the wall and it just hangs there more securely. The downside I've noticed is I have a 24 by 36 Ikea frame in my hallway and because you're pulling on the two sides of the frame and this is just particle board, it's not solid wood, it ends up bowing this whole top part up. And I think they're 24 by 36, when, at least when I purchased it, was only $29.99 Canadian. So at that price point, if it's bowing, you get what you pay for. So the price was reasonable, but it won't last forever. So this is a great option if you're on a budget and I, I really do recommend checking out what your IKEA has before buying a print because then you can make sure it fits. Where often I find if I have a print in mind and I go to IKEA, they won't have it in stock. So often the stock at IKEA is one of the limiting factors for using the IKEA frame. So in conclusion, that was your local framer, Customs Frames Canada, your local art store, or Ikea. I'd love to hear if you recommend any frames. I would love to find one of these options having a floating frame for canvas, especially for my originals. I'd love to find a light colored solid wood frame. So I'm still looking into that, but for now, those are the options I use for my paper prints and I thought I would share them with you. I'd love to have any feedback or if you have a suggestion that you prefer. So thank you so much for watching. If you do end up purchasing a print and framing it, I would absolutely love if you shared that with me. Either tag me on Instagram, emailed me the photo. I just love to see how my work is and ends up being displayed and it does inspire new ways of, of painting, new sizes. Yeah, I can't wait to see. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.